What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me here at my YouTube channel. This is where I talk about the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, TV shows, if it's geeky, if it's nerdy, this is where we talk about it, right here. And right now, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on episode one of The Mandalorian season two. Yes, it finally dropped today on Disney Plus. I got to sit down, I gotta watch it. And what did I think of it? Well, first of all, let me say that the first thing I noticed, the very first thing that I noticed was that it was 54 minutes. It was almost an hour. So it was double the length of most of season one episodes. That was the first thing I noticed. And you noticed the runtime. You noticed that there was more content in one episode. And I liked that. It allowed them to tell a more complete story. So you've got the overarching story that they're just now starting, but you also had an arc within the story that was contained to this episode. And that was phenomenal, and they did that very well. Alright, so what did I think of the episode? Guys, this was one of the best episodes of The Mandalorian yet. It might have been my favorite episode of The Mandalorian. And I think that's because, number one, yes, it did tell its own story. From beginning to end, there was a beginning, there was a middle, there was an end. Um, but for a couple reasons. Number one, they leaned heavily into the Western tropes, right? They, they, they've been saying for a long time, John Favreau's been saying that this is a Western. You definitely got hints of that in season one, especially with the music. The music definitely harkens back to, to Westerns. Um, the, the Mandalorian as the gunslinger definitely harkens back to westerns but in this one you had western tropes that were being that, that were being put on screen saying see look at this we are a western um, you had the 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 duel the gun duel in this episode um, you had the, um, um, the 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 small town that's uh, the, the small western town where the innocents are being threatened um, by something evil. Um, you had uh, people from different walks of life coming together. You had the town marshal. Yes, this episode is called the marshal. So you had the town marshal who was kind of keeping law and order in the town and, and, and was willing to put his life on the line to protect the people in the town. And uh, the Mandalorian is kind of that outsider that comes in, like the Magnificent Seven, that outsider who comes in to liberate the town. All that stuff is going on in here. And it was just a lot of fun. A lot of the imagery that they showed it throughout this throughout this episode had Western imagery. The gunslinger on horseback. Um, just, yeah, guys, a lot of Western imagery in here. And it was just a lot of fun. Um, let me think. Uh, Baby Yoda obviously is in this. He's looking for... So Mando's looking for um, uh, an armor that will help him find... Um, more of Baby Yoda's kind, and when I say kind, I mean Jedi. I think he's just looking for a Jedi. Um, and that armor, that search for the armor, leads him back to Tatooine. And I love the fact that they went back to Tatooine, because Tatooine is like home base for the Star Wars universe. And, um... When they're on Tatooine, obviously we got we get a lot of familiar familiar sights. We get a lot of Easter eggs. We get a lot of um, species that we've seen before. Uh, you know, sand people play very heavily into this episode. We get a a better glimpse into the lives of sand people in this episode than we ever have in Star Wars. Um, you know, before this, Attack of the Clones is probably the best glimpse into the life of sand people we've ever had, at least in live action. This was the best glimpse into sand people that we've ever had we, we we got to see how their how their culture works to some extent and i had a lot of fun with that and um um you know we saw uh the crate dragon we had references to i mean the whole episode kind of revolved around the crate dragon which was cool um I, you know, I, I wasn't as super excited about it as I think a lot of people in the geek community were. Um, I kind of forgot that the crate Dragon was a thing until um, until I, uh, somebody online reminded me that 
uh, R2D not or C3PO past a crate dragon skeleton in A New Hope. I just kind of forgot. I just kind of forgot about it. Um, but don't worry, Star Wars geeks. I quickly remembered. <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah, so the crate dragon played it played a big role in this. And like I said, just a lot of imagery from uh, Star Wars past. Um, there was the, there was references. As far as imagery goes, there was even references to Phantom Menace, and and that was that was cool. You know what the Mandalorian is able to do is they're tying Star Wars past and present and future all together. You remember in the last season of Mandalorian, they introduced the healing power in the Mandalorian, the healing power that would later be used in Rise of Skywalker. So the Mandalorian, in a lot of ways, is a bridge between old Skywalker or old Skywalker between old Star Wars and new Star Wars, and I think that's fantastic as well. Um, so, yeah, this did not have <clears throat> this did not have um, dark saber. This did not have um, um, you know a lot of the story threads that were left dangling in the last season were not resolved here. This was strictly a um, introductory um, episode into the second season. And, you know, that's perfectly fine as well. Because we established where he's at with the child, what he's doing right now. Uh, we got to meet a new great character in The Marshal, played by Timothy Oliphant. And by the way, that was just a great character. Um, and we got some questions answered about a certain bounty hunter from the original trilogy we got some questions answered about that bounty hunter from the original trilogy <laughs> and 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 the questions that got answered about that bounty hunter from the original trilogy poses all sorts of new questions <laughs> and um the armor <laughs> you guys already know where i'm going with this i don't know why i'm trying to be cavalier about it the armor that he's after in this is a very familiar Mandalorian armor, um, so yeah, there's, there's that. The, the it's very familiar, <laughs> and I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing, um, we're gonna be seeing more of that armor, um, and that that armor is going to play, um, that armor is gonna armor is gonna play a big role in, in this season. Um, you know, we didn't get any of uh, Cara Dune. We didn't get any Apollo Creed. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of the characters that we've been waiting to see, we had we didn't see this episode. This was strictly about Mando and the Marshal. And that was good. That was good. You know, they don't need to rush in. This is long-form storytelling. They don't need to rush in and cram everything into the opening episode. Um, you, did you miss this guy? Well, here he is. Um, we don't need that. We just need them to tell the story coherently in the best way that they can and they're doing that so yeah might be my favorite episode of the mandalorian yet i loved it loved it loved it loved it but that's just me what did you think of the mandalorian season two episode one let me know in the comments down below make sure you subscribe to my channel i put out a lot of content want to make sure you're up to date with everything that i'm doing and as always thank you for joining me here at the oq review where we get to talk about all the geeky nerdy stuff that we love to talk about until next time, we'll see you later.